craft to look for the potential kingdom. I just love the fact that you not only get a tweet and then rather than just showing the tweet, you just print off the tweet and show us that way. I appreciate um, it. People are looking out for us right here. We've got the Denby Draft Kingdom ready to show up today. I, 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 this feels like sort of semi-bribery of the casters, natives, and I appreciate the social media game. I appreciate you swaying my analyst over to your side, but I, I won't be swayed that way. I will remain a neutral party, whatever Melvin of the Printer game might be trying to tell me. Especially as we're into draft here. Natives on the blue side, AAB on the red, and a few bands coming through already. Nothing impressively surprising in there thus far. Couple picks we need to keep our eyes open for. Haven't seen the Corky yet, haven't seen any acknowledgement of the Janna. There was hovers in the previous game. But coming into it, if I'm natives, this is a good game to try it if it's something that you want to be pulling out throughout the rest of the split. And equally, AAB looking for a potential angle to pull ahead. Simultaneously, very good for them. This is a very up-in-the-air strategy. We've only seen single-digit games of it, particularly over in LCS. So, I'm curious to see as we get that signature karma lock-in that I believe for FlyQuest did end up going to the top lane. Gives them a lot of flex potential, though. Your hope sort of springs eternal for Enchanted Tops, Melvin, is and I don't know whether to be disappointed or pleased for you. Either way, it's locked in. Of course, it may end up going down to the likes of Clocks as well. Uh, Yoppa and Clocks for my money, were probably the MVPs of the UKLC last summer, or just last year in general. They were phenomenal, utterly amazing, the two of them. So I'm very excited to see what they can be doing. Obviously doing very well right now in Division 2 in 2022. The response from AAB right now is the Jarvan, likely for Bobas, but we'll have to see kind of how it plays out here, because there's some ways you can start flexing around to the madness of support and stuff. I don't like early Jarvan. I'm just going to come out and say it. So there goes okay. your flex potential right there. Uh, I don't like it when it's on its own against just one pick. It, on three, mm. I think it's good. However, natives appear to be playing into it by locking in more enchanters, more mobile carries that are susceptible to the Jarvan. So might see AAB get away with murder on this one. A lot of options for the natives draft right now. That could be the Karma heading into a solo lane, could be the Smite strategy, could be just Karma Seraphine bot lane. A lot That's of different great. variations on the table. And I would assume something like a jungle to get picked up here would really hide everything instead opting for that safe Camille top lane. You know, it's worth remembering that Snarl, of course, does have things like the Carthus in the back pocket. We've seen what he can do when he's given some room to carry stuff. That's definitely something to be afraid of. And now to see what AAB will lock in uh, towards this mm. mid lane. A few options around could get pretty interesting. Of course, they've got this, what looks to be that sport jungle match, but unless there's some real madness Terry. going on. Wait, Zeri's open and there's double shield champions on the I enemy thought, team. I thought, I thought, you, I thought there's something been hoppers. Instead, they're not going to go to that quite yet. You're right, Zeri, one of those people who does love stealing away those shields with that passive. Instead, Jace locked in, likely to that top side. And looking to play into Lundorf, who's been bluntly consistently great, I think is the way to put it. Any champion you care to mention, he seems to be smashing on right now. And they have got the Camille as one of their signatures. So this isn't a good start right here for AAB to look down. A potential hyper-funneled Lundorf Camille is something that I'm not asking to play against in any game soon. As we do get the Poppy, I conceptually see the point as in the jungle it could do very well, especially because you've got these enchanters, regardless of where they go, expecting it to be in the bottom lane. They're gonna be weak to hyper-engage, which means Poppy being able to protect them in the jungle, really, really mm -hmm. useful. I expect to see something else coming out here similar, might be the Galio potentially, will be the Hecarim, actually, one of those hyper-funnelable junglers instead. All right. The Hecarim off the boards, as you mentioned. It's been kind of rising in priority around and about the, the Nordics, the NLC scene. The likes of, of course, uh, Haru running it up for X7 around and about. We've seen it kind of rising in priority. It's great with the Hecarim as well. Look back to last year when that was a dangerous combo. So completely agree with banning that one off. Syndra, the final band, just a couple pocket mid lane picks taken off to try and stifle Blueburn's champion pool here. What is the response? Still an AD carry, still a mid laner that does need to be locked in right now for AAB. I expect it's going to be the Jin, but that's not really great into the double enchanters just because you don't really get to pop them. I much prefer that as an answer, just going in for the hard engage, but we are going to see activating the trap card. It's not actually going to be 
what we expected. Okay, we have got a lot happening right now. Is that that could be Kindred ADC? That could be Enchanter I'm Bottle from. I'm pretty sure. Oh gosh, that has to be Kindred Jungle because nothing else can jungle here unless you're going really old school Camille Jungle, which would be crazy. So it has to be Kindred funnel. Jungle, Camille mm. Top, Braum. Could be Camille oh, Mid. Therapy. Could be Karma Top. I, I don't know. The final lock in for Bluebird is the Vega. Oh, okay. Now I've got to okay. wait and see where all the flexes end up. Seraphine mid karma bot, definitely a possibility. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't think we're going to talk about anything on the native side until 20 seconds when everything's confirmed. Nope. But we can talk about the combos here we've got right now from AAB. A lot of Wombo coming in with this Samira and the Vigar potential. You put up the cage, Samira gets a free dash to A by, they get stunned by it. Is going to enable a lot of pop-off moments. And when you look at the native's team... I do not see any instant interruption tools. The Bromol delayed. The Camille hookshot delayed. This means that, in theory, we should be able to see Samira be able to jump in, negate a lot of damage with that Whirling Blade, and then proceed to pop off in these fights. And that is realistically the way AAB can take this one. Completely agree. Of course, you do have quite a lot of, you know, the double enchants. You've got Encore. You've got Braum Shield. But there's a lot of pressure on Kindred this game to make things happen. There's a lot of pressure on Lundorf to make things happen. Of course, they're two players I would trust to do that considering how well it's gone. But actually, you know, for all that there's been some kind of draft flexes, shall we say. And I mean that in the sense of, you know, flexing your muscles rather than flexing your picks. Though there was that too with the therapy and the karma. All the same. I feel the potential AAB here. I think I'd rather their comp. It feels pretty easy. It feels easy to play. You've got a lot of oh. zone control. You've got a lot of blow up. You've got a Samira who can pop off with the people who end up at low HP afterwards. I don't know if I'm being honest with you because I'm looking Tell at me. this and I tend to agree that AAB should have the advantage because there are not many engaged tools from natives. Mm. And the thing is, it's Camille going in, right? But her follow up is Encore. That is the easiest thing to block from Samira in the world. So, in reality, I think that Ryberry can have a killer game on this Samira pick and honestly is the person I'm watching to try and carry AAB through this suddenly playable matchup. Suddenly playable matchup. What an intriguing draft that was, I think it's fair to say. Is it a kingdom? Seraphine Karma. Is it a kingdom? Does that count? I don't know. We'll see in practice. Draft Kingdom. It's certainly it's certainly trying to found and break some new ground. We'll see whether it does turn into a new kingdom or whether it's kind of you've tried to, you know, put foundations in quicksand. Uh, that still yet to be seen. Still going to have to theorize a little bit here how we're expecting it all to play out. Of course, Enchanters definitely been raising in priority over the last few weeks and months. But it's time to see, of course, whether they can make it work here into some of the difficulties that might be coming towards them with, you know, we said Vigar, Java, Nautilus, lots of big zone control there. And that is pretty dangerous. So of course, maybe player diff can turn up as well because natives have just been running the school here, it feels like. Now, we've seen anybody that's been watching the LCS has seen the two Cloud9 games. That is the reason that European fans are tuning in to watch LCS most of the time right now. And the thing that has been the recurring theme is first dragon fights. If your enchanters are allowed to get towards their moonstones, allowed to get towards their first items, you pretty much can't contest them on raw value in the early game. Speaking of raw value in the early game, we've got a Brom invade, one of the most feared things on the planet, with a Karma who is right up there with it. And that's a kindred early on who does want to get in your face and start doing things like stack marks, of course, does have... Uh, the Java marked early. It's the standard start. Won't quite be able to get a hold of this blue buff, though, as it resets. AB still hanging around. It's just the 3v3 right now. We've actually Seraphine got Seraphine. Yeah, they're rotating know, so over. Here goes as well. I think it's going to turn to a 4v4. This is going to come down to a smite fight. Exhaust comes down to the bubbles. They're going straight forwards. Bluebird over the wall. Does get a lot of damage onto Clocks, so who has to flash away. Smite goes down, but it's smite early, which means Snarl gets a hold of it. Does the first blood come through onto the... Vega, Ryberry trying to get through here and get as much down as they can. Ooh. Gets another one. And that will be a one for two in trade. It is Ryberry who gets a hold of this one. He's caught in the cage and has to flash out. That's AAB, I feel, who probably come out on top, even if the blue buff right now, much like the World Championship belt, is on the last man surviving. 
With that killer level one right there, Bluebin levels up to two and is able to really have an impact on that fight. I would say that that went wildly in AAB's favor, with the exception of the jungle. Snow not only managing to pick up that first camp, I would actually like it. Could we potentially click on them and see if they got the mark? Because we no, Jarvan was the one that was marked, actually, so we're fine. It was the camp only that they are able to capture. They will be able to continue to path through. Jarvan set behind early, possibly one of the least intimidating champions in the game. The only thing I will say, though, is there is a flashless Seraphine in the mid lane. This is prime gank territory and needs to be where AAB is looking. It's a flashless Kindred. It's a flashless Clocks on the Brawn as well. On the other side, yes, Samira down her flash, but that's kind of it. Actually, the summoner advantage also going towards AAB. Of course, not led to much of a gold lead because, you know, various trades back and forth of uh, camps and there was a kill back, etc., etc. But honestly, pretty good defense there from AAB on that level one. Speaking of defense, we actually have the Scuttlecrab defense coming out right now from natives. Walking on over and protecting that one, enabling it for the jungler, I believe, has come over and collected that. Didn't actually see if they got the mark. The camp count does agree there. So yeah, they got it. That's going to be important. You want this kindred getting up to that four mark point because that is when they get the range increase and that is when they become a real ADC, which when you have three supports, is kind of a big deal really is going to be a bit of a tricky one. They're going to come down here. Of course, remember, there are still some of those summers down, but Tuna taking quite a lot of damage here. Get stunned in place as the concussive blows do stack up. It's going to get turned down pretty low, and Jarvan has left to, to go back towards his jungle, and that's kind of it for now. So I feel like we haven't really had time to acknowledge this top matchup, and it is going to be an important one, because when you run all these enchanters, one of the things we're saying throughout the whole evening, and I feel like it won't be the last time we say it, is you need very good carries. You need hyper carries. Kindred, not necessarily up there. She can be, but she needs the acceleration to get there. And then Lundorf on this Camille definitely can fit the bill, but not in the traditional sense. It's going to be a lot more mechanically and situationally required for them to get the work done. Looking for those flanks, getting onto Blueben on this Vigar, and really making their work done. So... The Jace counter pick is going to be an important one for us to keep our eyes on. Indeed, it, that will be a prime target for what's going on. Still, right now, going to be Kindred that's got that early lead right now. Early CS leads in mid as well. Just being as obnoxious as possible is this Seraphine. Unsurprising. And Camille, perhaps, as you mentioned, a little bit surprisingly, he's got the early shot. I'm feeling pretty happy. And this, you know, melee versus ranged matchup, which is not necessarily what you want to be seeing here. <laughs> Ooh, big hook. It was a big hook, actually, as Tun does go in, but the trade back is still pretty nasty. Of course, Glacial means it does take less damage uh, back in trade. And uh, Rebury going to be feeling relatively okay with the kill and the assist, and got some room to potentially scale and be a real threat as this game continues to move on. As Samira with items, as Samira with gold is a big terror even if she is significantly less common in the meta than she once was say last year one of the most recent pentakill machines to be added to the game is going to be an important one to keep our eyes on as it develops not going to expect too much out of them in these early skirmishes but the fact they were the beneficiary of a good amount of gold is going to matter we have the infernal dragon on the map but right now the objective i'm looking at is getting this camille behind because there's been so much jungle attention to this bot lane that we really haven't seen anybody look top yet. And Gungus quietly just existing in this lane. Jarvan is going back though. So this is the time for Lundorf to really push their stuff. Get the wave shoved in and then look for the base. They have got minion advantage on the red side though. So if they want, they could look to try and freeze it potentially. Could definitely think about doing that. Of course, it depends what they actually do. Is Still got to think about whether there's going to be some pressure in mid lane instead. As Bluebin forced to flash out there on the Vagar. Does manage to get out safely though, but look at the on the way pings. They want to punish this one pretty quickly, but not quite there in time. And natives get out without any more engage instead of Lundorf just engaging on the top side using that adaptive shielding to be as obnoxious as possible. And crucially for me, if we look at this mid lane, we have the Seraphine about to get the flash back up, not been punished since that level one flip that we had earlier. And now with Vigar lacking flash. You can just look for an Encore Flash combo set up for your Kindred, and that should be a dead Vigar 9 out of 10 times. So 
I'm going to be very scared if I'm the AAB mid laner right now. Got to be playing extremely safe when you do not have Bobus lurking around on the side. Particularly when you've basically got them just trying to run interference on these Kindred Marks across the map. Alright, well then I'm going to get a hold of that one. I'm not quite sure what the marks are at yet. I didn't actually see which side the Scuttle Crab Marks stormed on, so worth checking in and seeing where the kindred is at in terms of that mark score because of course there are some very important breakpoints namely four marks and seven marks the old school adage is if you are at four marks around 18 minutes you are on track to having a good kindred game because you've got your range increase and you're feeling pretty happy at that point still need to check in and see how it uh, pans out of course because kindred is sometimes a little bit rng depending on where those camps spawn and how you're able to get in on the sides of the map where, you know, have you got lanes to be able to get in to make that happen or not. But we'll get to start up the early Herald. Has got clocks up here to offer support. And while you have got Jarvan on the red buff that I don't think they're going to want to come in as yet. But with level 6, maybe they do. This isn't going down that fast right now. And they do get the eye here. And instead, not going to get here in time as... Seraphine, just make sure it's a little bit difficult. There's the level six for Kindred and feeling just happy enough. And it's on one mark right now. There you go. Yeah, that is going to be a calm early game. I feel like we're not going to get any more action. That level one really getting the uh, blood flowing for everybody and now just sending it back to resting. Not too much for us to comment on at the moment, apart from where that Rift Herald is going to look to go. For my money, I would say you probably want to be sending that to the mid lane with Lundorf down here. You could try and dive top lane, but that's a bit risky. You don't want to have your two carries flipping it under tower, especially when there is going to be the teleport available from Bluebrunt in the future, coming up not too far away. And most importantly, if you can break open this mid lane tower, you have Karma, Seraphine, both of these two, AoE shields that give movement speed. I'm waiting to see whether Karma will be heading for the Moonstone or for the Shirelias, but either way, you have got insane rotation value in the mid-game as you start to look between the Baron, the Dragons, whatever is on the map right now, even just collapsing on side lanes. So, getting rid of the mid-tower really unlocks you to do that as it starts to go forward, as really where we need to see the focus come down. That is a pretty adamant statement from my color cast who said that's the way they want it to be it's where you want to see it and of course honestly when you've got the setup there between uh seraphine who can make things happen and they can do things like this it's a good event horizon no device space the encore's coming through though remember no flash on blueburn will get knocked up and not quite go down because kindred ults actually the way it saves the vegar's life and it's one wait that a two for one in favor of aab they're gonna keep running down as rebury pulls the inferno trigger and natives actually bite themselves in the back there by putting down the lambs despite a touch early. That is going to go in the favor of the Samira team, which is basically what we expected when she's in a skirmish. But considering it was natives initiating the fight, really not the result that you're hoping for right there. And I think that actually watching through that, Bluebin's ultimate got blocked by the Brom shield, ah. which gave enough time for them to survive, made it a very long and kind of disgusting fight by the end of it. And when you have those super extended the fights, normally it's enchanters that win. Samira, though, who can look for resets, is up there contesting against them and is why we see this pick come out right now. With the cleanse in pocket and so little hard CC to keep them out of the fight, it's really, really scary. Let's take a look at how that one played out in this replay. So, it was the initial play going straight onto the Vigar. We said they had no flash earlier and it was the really nice footwork to get around and as the Kindred Ult comes out, the full collapse from AAB begins. And you can just watch. Bribery goes from the right side to the left side of the lane, all the way back to the right, and then Lundorf is saved by their karma. But that is all. Big win for AAB. This last place team that was supposed to be destroyed in this matchup was against the clear favourites, according to even our both interviewees just you know, 20 minutes ago. Doing exceptionally well here. They're up 600 gold. They're 2-1 on 2 on two of their most important characters in this Vigar and this Samira who've got their first Mythics complete. And even, honestly, this Jace up here doing just fine until Lundorf. Yes, Glox is around, but I, I don't know whether there's even a kill option here, really. Hachi's gone in and maybe he's going to get turned around, but Tun is around to try and make this one a difficulty and they're going to get the flash out of Gunkus. It's going to be important as it goes on, but they will forfeit Dragon Pressure on the other side of the map. No jungler, nobody to come steal this one. 
and it will accelerate to find out, get that two dragon mark. That is when you can start threatening soul point. And threatening soul point is a lesser threat to soul, but it's still something important. As we do get the Rift Herald actually chucked down top lane. Gonna look to force Gunkus away, but that TP from Ryber is here, and this is why you don't really want to be using it up this lane. Gonna see whether they can get too much. They got a couple plays, but I don't know who really got the goal. Probably just Snyla on, the, on, the, on, the, on that um, Kindred, and that's kind of it right now. I guess we're not gonna stop any recalls as yet. Uh, Clocks, though, is forced on that one, of course, uh, with a shock blast coming to his face, but the door went up, took no damage. It's just a delayed recall, and now the Seraphine in a bit of bother in mid lane. Remember, there's no flash. That's gonna be the event horizon Ooh. into the dark matter. Primordial burst. No way, no how. Seraphine is unplugged. Really clean by Tun right there, initiating that play. And we do not have the flash available to Seraphine. That's the thing. These mid laners, immobile, no way to save themselves. Even with the crown of the Shattered Queen on Bluebin, it only takes one single ability landing beforehand, and basically it's the same target. You could just keep bringing pressure to mid. The only thing is, though, it's way easier for AAB to do it. Between the Nautilus and the Jarvan, they have much better setup and engage tools, which is something we haven't said about them in the past. There goes the Hextech ultimatum, but he's knocked out with the hammer blow. Going to go to the skies to try and get a hold of this Kindred, but it's not going to happen. That will be a quick kill on Snile there, who has managed to get to the four marks, actually, at this point. Uh, not quite sure where those are from camps. Of course, still got that Jarvan by their name. But of course, I don't know whether there's a little bit of a spectator bug, because I've not seen that shift all game by there. Ah, uh, you know, Kindred's one of those champions that just plays havoc with how we're actually meant it's to true. see the game. It's like watching summoners after rewinding a, a custom game when, like, you look at that. It just all bugs out. So there's not much point trying to lay on that one. As we do get Lundorf potentially going to collapse this top tower. Does. Okay. And that brings the goal back to pretty much even. It's important for Kindred, who's now got, as we said, those all-important mark point nice and early into the game. So... While AAB feeling pretty happy, Natives kind of recovering a little bit here after a couple of plays have managed to go in their way kind of behind the scenes as well. Interesting. We actually see Snell picking up the Gale Force as opposed to the Kraken Slayer this game. Looking for that extra mobility to try and dodge away from some of the pick tools on the enemy team. Get away from that Jarvan before they can get the Cataclysm down. Get out of the Vigar cage before it gets you. Not sure how I strictly feel about that one. When you are the only... ADC of the team and you have this many supports makes sense you're going to have enough supplemental tools to keep you going it's just going to be something we need to be keeping our eye on as the fights happen as it does add that little bit extra skill expression to the kindred's already very intensive kit um do you see gunkers return the favor in the top side there getting a hold of that turret we'll have to wait and see whether the gale force choice as we've kind of been discussing comes back to uh, bite style later on into this game. A little ironic, of course, when you're playing Kindred and Wolf does, you know, quite a lot of that. Uh, but hey, what are you going to do? This game, pretty much just wait. This is a waiting game through and through. We are going to get to the Dragon Soul point and then everything is going to pop off because neither of these teams really want to be throwing everything at you unless it's a pretty safe bet. The safest bet, though, is going to come from this Jarvan. And it's something that I want to talk about based on AAB's previous games. When we were doing the prep looking at this, like you said earlier, this matchup was expected to be a complete wash. The main thing we had for team narratives is this is the Halo Reach objective to survive for AAB, just have a good performance. They're doing that already. Admittedly, it was because natives flipped level one for all intents and purposes. But, but looking at it with positive spin, I like what they have got for themselves this game. They have got proactive engage tools in this jungle support duo that they have not packed with them in their previous games. And it's important because when you pick scalers like the Vigar or the Velgahals that we've seen Bluebell pull, uh, Bluebin pull out twice now, you need something that gets you through the early game. We saw it in our last matchup that Munster used that mid-jungle proactive duo to basically just get the game on the right foot and win from there. So I love what AAB have actually got for themselves and they're in a cracking spot to make it work. They absolutely are. They, you know, they're going for that, not just the Halo Reach survive, they're looking for the legendary ending. No spoilers into what that actually is, but to those who know, that was a really good reference. Um, I like it. That will involve making sure they get through that objective to survive. They're doing more than that right now. They're actually competing. They are 
throwing some blows back they're up a thousand gold they've got two dragons this would be soul point if they can secure it and they have vision control and look how they can control the choke points with the event horizon Yoppa is going to get depth charge. That's a knock up onto Lundorf, who's going to try and survive best they can. Goes back into the Kindred um, Lambs respite, staying alive best they can as well. But the healing comes through. Big encore afterwards. Ton going to be taken out. It is Seraphine who claims that one. The beat drops to claim the Nautilus, and he is dropped back into the ocean. Now, Bluebin in a difficult position. Does have the flash, doesn't have to burn it quite yet. Dragon now started up, but remember, down flank. the man. And there could be the teleport flank. Indeed, Lundorf has gone back. Come back at this full HP. Can look for the hook shot. There's the event horizon. That's the free reign to go in and try and get as much out as they can. Precision protocol claims Gunkus' is life. Ribery pulls that Inferno Aww. trigger. Gets one, but gets shut down. And it's not enough. And now whether Jarva can come in for the steal is all that's remaining for AAB. They still have the smite up. This is going to be a flip, but there oh, is going to be a denial. Oh, never mind. Okay, that, that is, is a denial asset. Happen. And now they're going to stand on top of the TP. And Bloom is going like, I really didn't want to be here. That's the Dark Matter going to do some damage. There goes Nautilus. Going to try and turn it around. Look up for the life. Hookshot back in on to Nautilus. Are you sure? Dark Matter doesn't quite secure it. I mean, I... No, Baleful Strike. I apologize. The wrong ability for Vega. The girl has another dredge line. And that Baleful Strike secures four stacks. Okay, Tun played that fight immaculately for my money. I hope we get a replay of that one because I'm so excited to break it down. But most importantly, that is natives picking up the dragon, denying the soul point. And when you have mountain dragons with a lot of healing and a lot of shielding, you get even more value because you get those resistances applied over multiple times because you just keep artificially boosting up your health bar. Yes. You do, and that was a very close little fight, and you asked, and so you shall receive. Here's Hooray! The of this fight. Very close stuff, especially after that cage came down. This is going to be brilliant for you. And it was all on turn getting the initial ultimate to bait the engage on Karma, but then the hook back to turn on to Lundorf completely knocks them out of this fight. While they do end up going down here, if they had managed to disengage on the AAB squad after that initial start, this would have been possibly one of the best angles they could look for. Remember, looking at this play, you shouldn't be able to beat Native's comp here. The whole point of these enchanters is this is when they're strongest. One item spike, they are disgusting. And it is a good engage from Plots to keep it going, but watch this engage from Ribery right here. Into four people, the Samira blocks so much value and still gets a kill. Yeah, it's not great overall when you look at it from a top-down perspective, but this is how narrow the windows for these fights are going to be. Okay, I guess there's a dead Vigar. Uh, there is indeed, and the problem is this is now a few kills that have started to go on to some very scary members. It is a Leandri's build, Seraphine by the by. It is a Last Whisper coming in for the Kindred, who's feeling very happy in this game. 4-1-3, and three. Lundorf, for all that um, we saw some good moments from AB in that last fight, it was still the Camille that came out very much the happiest member of natives picking up a number of kills a number of shutdowns and now at four one and three now with another turret to her name can continue to be a pressure point in this game we do see right now on the subject of those key items we've got raul about to finish off that seraphs right mm -hmm. there on the seraphine that is going to be contributing more ability haste it's just a very gold efficient item across the board the main thing to stack up that tier we see on the other side bluebin has the tier stacked up but is actually opting for the raw damage of a exactly. rabbit first look you are a phenomenally evil yordle um in fact i'd love to see how much phenomenal evil power bluebin has managed to stack up thus far in the game if we can possibly get that up at some point Ooh. production and once they get okay. that death cap, there's some uh, some ability power to that vegar's name and not quite that hanging around there it is! Ooh. One Rabadon's death cap to one cute, cuddly, and clearly monstrously evil Bluebin Vigar. <laughs> and when you are a shield and healing comp, one of the things you fear in this world is an execute. That Vigar ultimate can put you down even with a massive shield around you. And the itemization for Bluebin only gets better throughout the game. Next, they'll be able to pick oh, up sure. that Seraphs if they want it. There's also the Shadow Flame on the table possibly the most efficient item in the game when you're against these big enchanter strategies and on the subject of the shield destroyers gunkus has quietly picked up that serpent's fang reducing the effectiveness of natives mid and uh, adc combo 
They absolutely have. Of course, two items have generally come through now for natives as well. It is the Putrefier second for the Karma, looking to offer as much anti-healing as possible and makes sense when you've got that shield bow, when you've got the gore drinker. A lot of healers are on the side of AAB as well. Um, but it is kind of like a, a carry Seraphine build here, as we've kind of been alluding to. It is now that Seraph's embrace that's come through, transformed from the Archangel staff, oh. knocked out of the hook shot there uh, by Gunkus was Lundorf. Nice little play there. Is the uh, Ravenous Hydra second for Camille as well, looking for as much wave control as possible, which makes sense when you are into the, the AoE and range of the Jace. Now we have the build up for the next dragon. Is going to be another contest for the soul. And keep your eyes on Bluebin. If they can keep this Crown of the Shattered Queen up, they are going to be very, very safe. But between the Karma and the Seraphine, there are great tools for getting rid of it. And the main reason they need that is because Lundorf is a scary Flash Camille. No Ignite gaming this time around. So they have the potential to just collapse onto this Vigar, and no matter how much AP you have, there's not much it does to get the Camille off of your face. You've got a crown of the Shadow Queen, you've not got a stopwatch, but you have got an engage. That's a decent lambs respite though, but it's blown early into this game. The turnaround damage shuts down Kindred, but it's now turning back in trade as Riley gets a big engage back. Encore is burned. It's a one for one jungler for jungler. No smites available, but you do have a Camille and Precision Protocol will offer enough secure here that AB just not feeling comfortable enough to come in quite yet. Ooh, got the inversion though. The TP coming in from Gunkus to the mid lane. It might just be a rush to try and get that mid tower down. If you can open up the map, it enables your Nautilus to look for a lot more picks. The only thing is getting collapsed on now. Well, there's the beat drop through, does get the root onto Gunker, so you guys have that Leandri's burn now ticking. Another beat drop coming through, continuing to chase on as much as they can, but no further picks really available. And that mid lane turret stays up for natives who are up now, but only about 500 gold. This game is very, very close. Reminder again, this is a 4 and 0 monster team versus a 0 and 4 winless team in AAB. Not what we were expecting coming into this matchup. And I think it brings it back to those questions we're asking our guests after those interviews. This game, League of Legends right now, is so open for the drafting. You can put enchanters everywhere you want. You can go for Jarvans and Vigars for all you care. Most champions have a window where they are good. And at this point in the game, we have got two comps that theoretically want to 5v5 just death ball on top of each other. And we're just waiting for those dragon spawns because that is the trigger every single time. It is now two to two. Gonna be at least 10 minutes before we start to see a dragon soul go either way. But it has gone in the favor of natives for the past two. And I feel like that is likely to continue to be the trend if we do not see AAB break open this mid lane tower and force the double enchanter plus Brom combo to break apart and go elsewhere. So I'm getting out of dodge there, but now Lundorf has found his way towards this chase. Gonna miss the hook shot though. There's the Hextech ultimatum and will not be able to trade on anymore. The precision protocol coming through, but the damage pretty extreme there from Gunkers actually, who has managed to get three items complete at this point. Beat drop onto two in the jungle. Those AAB were rotating around to see whether there was more to be found. There was not. There are very cheeky sidesteps from both top laners. I love just watching the same kind of matchups over and over again and watching those individual case by case outplays. Ryberry's been left alone with the mid lane tower. He's got back off Uncle? Lubin. Does he gets to stroll out. There by the Uncle. But yeah, he does manage to sidestep their Encore and isn't going to be taken out on that one. So uh, picks being attempted around and about by pretty much everyone here, it feels like. Couple key summoners, sorry, not summoners, uh, ultimates. That's the word I'm looking for down in the Encore, and of course the Hextech ultimatum, but both mid lane turrets being up means that Devs will try and move in and secure this one, but Vigar is so difficult to siege into with this cage, makes it quite difficult. Still Ooh. do manage to finally secure that structure in the mid lane as Gunkus is trading into a big minion wave. I'm not sure you want this one, a precision protocol precisely slices Jace's throat. Going to result in the kill, but nothing more after that. No summoners invested from either side. It's just going to be a casual solo kill to build up the mental fact that in the side lane, we've seen that Gunk has been very confident taking these fights over and over, even though you are against Camille, who is one of the deadliest side laners in the game. And the thing is, when you have this enchanter strategy, side lanes are normally your weakness, but Camille is offering a very unique package deal here where 
because they're ahead of Gunkus in the side lane and Camille as the game goes on will continue to provide this level of nuisance, it means that you can play out the map in a lot safer of a manner. You can keep your four stack together and then just occasionally acknowledge the side lane. Yeah, you'll lose out on a bit of farm, but Vigar's not going to be split pushing on you. So natives in a very comfortable spot to set up for this next dragon. Well, Camille's got her dancing legs on now, having picked up that death's dance third here. A little bit more survivability, a bit more pressure into that 1v1 match. Less good, probably into the Vigar. You're going to say shoes. Were you I was. Say well, she's I, got I, the I deliberately shoes? didn't. I deliberately <laughs> didn't. See, it was, it was it was a deliberate choice. I put the pause in there for the for the humorous value. You see, it's it's all cutting. Mm, I was like, why would he hesitate there? It's like Camille's the expressions. You put the dancing shoes. Ah, ah I see. see. We're on Can the we same page. See? Cassiopeia yeah. logic over here. I like it. See, Kelly, you like it. She still gets to wear boots, by the way. She, I don't know whether like it's like you know like giant blade legs. Still gonna wear shoes on them because you know girls gotta have hobbies. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's knows? about, yeah, yeah, okay, hold on a minute. That, that, okay, enough about Camille and whether she can wear shoes or not, because Bulbas went for the engage there. Not quite enough, though, uh -oh. and instead now got to worry about the turnaround, the counter engage from Native, still pretty dangerous, but Tun finding another engage, there's the event horizon as well. It's on to the Kindred, who's eviscerated, put into the dirt, dead to right. But now Lundov going to come around, going to get stunned in place, all those event horizons have been so good. And it's like a magnetic black hole as Blueburn comes up clutch in those fights with two massive picks alongside Turner. Now it's Baron time with the jungler and top laner dead. The engagers for AAB are playing out of their mind. I'm giving Tun preemptive MVP if AAB can take this game. And even if not, they are playing like a person possessed with these picks right now. And that's the thing. When you're against comps that want to straight up 5v5 run at each other and just hit you, the best way you can beat that is picks. And right now we have the Encore set up. They're fishing for something. This is all natives can try and do. Otherwise, you're handing over the soul point and putting the five minute timer on potentially just losing all of the game from that point on. Once you get the soul, that is a massive swing in these team fights. And that is all we are getting. The gold is still neck and neck. AAB back to a slight lead here, about 800 gold. Anathema's Chains third from Vygar for even more pick. Okay. We've got ourselves okay. a replay coming up in just a few moments. Watch, right, turn, watch. watch Blue, but beautiful. Instant engage. I love this. You force out the Seraphine to have to retreat from here. It doesn't get the flash initially, but as soon as the depth charge comes in, that's the point where Rel is not comfortable. On the other side, Blueben throwing out the cooldowns preemptively to keep Lundorf off the side. He has been the thorn in AAB's side this entire game. And now, with the chain CC you can put together and the chase potential from Ribery, there's not much you can realistically do to stop him. And another amazing cage coming out. It's just everybody from AAB playing well. As they manage to find another pick with Baron, they could just stroll it down mid. That is your blocker gone. Yeah, I thought that we, look, we'd been through the draft and apparently it's pick ban for these guys right now. The pick's coming straight through and then Nate was wishing they had the band available to stop this happening. This is consistent stuff. That's three picks, it feels like, in a row. And now AB with the man advantage, going to continue shoving to get this tier two and may even look to go a little further. Lundorf is on a flank right now with the sweeper, looking to see whether there is an angle to get onto the back line of AB, but decides against it. Is instead going to try and get this bot wave in their control and find some kind of pressure elsewhere? thing is even if you get on top of the back line you have to kill the samira because the vigar now with the chains plus having the potential to just block all of that initial damage by having the shield it's basically just too tanky for you you go on them and it's going to need at least two rotations of abilities from lundorf to take down the vigar at this point so when the samira the one that has all of the setup they could ever dream of between the javan and the nautilus on their side it's rough you don't have a good window from natives because your dive potential sucks. It's just Lundorf, and then your follow-up gets completely hard countered. We talked about the Encore getting blocked by Samira. I haven't seen it happen too many times, but that's just because Ral doesn't want to throw it. As soon as you use that Encore, you know what's going to happen. I will at least call out that Kindred, despite having died a couple of times now, is up. Nearly a flame horizon over Bobas has got an infinity edge third. This is not a standard jungler. This is a crit carry three item ADC with a number of stacks to their name. They still have room to be able to carry if they can stay alive, but it's been 
very difficult. We've already called it out. Blighting jewel in inventory right now for Blue Blue's looking towards that void staff. Never mind a Seraph's embrace at this point. They're gonna get an engage on the Gunkos who had no idea what was going on. Get to the back end of the Hextech Ultimate and then will stay alive. Bluebun comes through with the Event Horizon and once again, the zone control, the turnaround from both teams proving incredibly difficult to deal with. Three supports on your team and you find wanting for a Morgana at this point. No Black Shield means you can't chase through that Vigar cage extremely oppressive and i wouldn't be surprised if lundorf turns this null magic in their inventory into a qss at this point actually gonna opt to go for the spirit visage makes a lot of sense when you have all the healing in tow and would go to counteract some of that burst we've seen from bluebin onto them but and it's an important one we are heading towards level 16s i would like to do the conditional checkup where we see what's kindred mark at and what the Vigar AP is at right now. We've hit that seven. That My is mind. critical uh, exactly. range. It absolutely is. Second range increase through seven marks is considered critical mass as far as Kindred is concerned. Four is nice. Seven is great. With the three items, with the stopwatch, feeling pretty happy. It's, spect it's a spectral cowl in inventory for Camille. It's a Zonia's full item right now from Seraphine. You've got the redemption in your first inventory. And that might mean... But Bluebin's job of blowing people up gets significantly harder when you can start doing things like uh, immuning or the, the primordial burst and the likes. Could I ask for an annoying question, Reed, before we get into the next fight? Can I see who is actually marked by that Anathema's Ooh, Chains on the Vigar? I question. assumed it would be Lundorf, but I haven't seen the, ana the little animation that goes around the feet for everybody. So you have to click around on them to try and figure it out. We've got the Jarvan still marked by Kindred. And then on the opposing team, who is the CC reduced member? Maybe we don't have time to find out. Is there actually a fight going on? The CC reduced member will remain a mystery right now until further notice. Dragon spawning in 15 seconds. It is AAB that holds Camille. court and walking into so many people. And it is Camille that has it, apparently. There you go. Got towards this dragon spawn watch for the cage watch for the dredge lines watch for gunkers who does manage to get towards his team the cage came down to make sure things are going on as actually lundorf got chunked out at the top end of that screen of course does have healing available and then comes the engage the door's gone up there is the glacial fissure turn flashing out as clocks returns the favorite bobas going in going golden they're gonna try and stay alive best they can the kindred ultimate not gonna keep the dragon alive right oh. now they've killed off style in goes Reverie doing so much damage the inferno trigger setting him straight to hell but not enough to finish off anybody else it's a kill it's a mountain soul and it's aab who are looking like the ones in position to to win this game jungler dead baron alive aab can do it all and you can't approach this objective you need to find a pick but they're all going to be grouped together and we've seen it every single time for the past 20 minutes you have tried to go in bluebin has put up the wall and said actually i would prefer you didn't so we're <laughs> going to get the baron the base the full-on soul and they're going to be able to stroll down mid and take another straight up 5v5 that happened when Style had flash, had stopwatch, but just had no time to press the button. Ran out of time, one could say, which is perhaps a touch ironic. And here we have the members of AAB looking to get their first game win in Division 2 against the undefeated natives. We've got a replay coming back up to see well they managed to do it just before we're going to see this push down mid lane. Might have to be a quick one. <laughs> I mean, the siege is already happening. There's no tower to defend. I think that one might have to go on hold, unfortunately. Have to wait on the game holes. could You're end right. without us looking at this point. Can we potentially get a tap onto Blue Ben to see how much damage that ultimate's doing? Because I'm feeling like it's up in the high thousands at this point. Ooh, Let's see. Gonna... 1,000 AP. That's a lot of damage. The ultimate is going to be probably one-shotting right oh, now. Lord, okay! Lord. Um, I'm sorry you had to witness those Ooh, scenes on your no. computer screen. No. That is, uh, uh, that's actually quite traumatizing. Um, ah, it's a 1200 damage W. Wait, what was the cooldown on that W? I know it scales oh, down. 2.3 no. seconds. No, it's no. actually a meteor no. swarm coming out from Blue Ben oh. right here. If they are protected, it's oh, got, it, it, it's, <laughs> you can hear Sephiroth's music going on right now. He's going to be playing one winged angel and summoning meteor down. You're absolutely right. Unreal damage. 
and uh, Lundorf trying desperately to provide a point of pressure elsewhere, but all the while you've got this artillery, this zone control, it's a minefield quite literally being laid out if a mine was in fact an asteroid crashing into atmosphere. They get another inhibitor and AB, they're playing it slow, they don't want to give any opportunity for natives to find a way back into this game. Very respectful, and you have to be when you are against the team that everybody in the league is saying is the best one by maybe not a margin but definitely the favorites coming into it and you are having such a killer performance i don't i'm gonna see now let's take a look at that replay actually as we can we finally find out what happened we did get time just not when expected and this was it on the side it was lindorf getting chunked out the flash down that's your only engage tool and it's gonna take him a lot of time to heal up now i want you to watch kindred right here this is going to be ton flashing defensively on the Nautilus, but keep your eyes on. The Gale Force escapes, but they force the Kindred Ult and yank oh. him out of it. Perfectly done, removes any chance of a flip. You allow the Samira to go full on 1v4. The stopwatch keeps him alive, no chance of a contest. And after this, it is just lights out. Free Baron, free double inhib, and it is just a matter of time, it feels, before AB can close this out. I don't even think you could get a better dredge line because it pulled them out of the Kindred Ultimate and into the Event Horizon Wall. Like, it's an, you are stunned for a solid three seconds. It's Berserker's Grieve on Kindred as well. There's no Merc Treads. There's no QSS. There's no Mikhail's. You're stuck there for the duration. And I tell you what, that is interminable. Morgana's Dark Binding can eat its heart out at that point. With this top lane tower getting sieged up, the biggest issue you have when you run these Enchanter comps is when you're against the super minions, you cannot clear them that well. Seraphine got pretty good wave clear in of herself, but when that Baron buff likely finds its way over to AAB's hands again, there's nothing you can do. Your wave clear is primarily AP. Kindred, not the best at clearing out the big minions. They much prefer the jungle camps. And I don't even care how many stacks you have left. You could have 12 at this point, Snarl. You're not going to be able to contest the range that Jace could be poking you out and Vygar could be denying you. They've got the Guardian Angel now, and maybe that allows some survive. But all the while, Lundorf has died at the other end of that base. Man down. They're going to start shoving in. Clocks is in the event horizon. And we've already seen a lot of people swallowed up by that singularity. That black hole. They're going to get that final inhibitor. They're going to get Clocks as well. They're going to get the kills they need. And unless there is the miracle of all turnarounds, I think AAB might have done it. Another Dark Matter comes screeching down from the skies and AAB are winless no longer natives fall to four and one. Oh, it's poetry in the making so wonderful to watch i i don't think we could have had a better game <laughs> relative to expectations my friend that was possibly as far and away from what was expected as possible we did a lot of draft prep we did a lot of team prep None of this came up, really. Um, that was supposed to be natives taking care of business. That was supposed to be some more standard drafts. What we got was AAB finding a great little draft option into a double Enchanted Cop and running a, a fantastic game from level one. Great turnaround on the invade and then those late game fights. Chef's kiss. I'm very excited to get to talk for our interviews and ask some questions based on that because that game is just like the human embodiment of a question mark ping of, well, okay, I suppose that happened. This is the glory of getting to watch competitive esports. Anything can happen. You're completely equal at the start of the game. It is just how you perform. We had an uncharacteristic issue from natives with that level one flip. The strategy, in theory, made a lot of sense, and I can't wait for us to break it down. But at the end of the day, applause to AAB. What a game. Absolutely, your eyes did not deceive you. AAB did beat Natives, but we are cutting to a break. And when we come back, we'll have some interviews to go around. So stick around.